In this video, we're going to see how we can create dummy variables. And a dummy variable is also known as an indicator variable. And it's a variable that takes on the values 1 and 0, where 1 means some condition is true. And it's very useful to represent subgroups of your data. Let's look at an example to get a better understanding of this. Suppose you're running a survey and you have this question over here whether the gender is male or female. If you just write the gender and you transfer that to Stata, you're going to have a string variable, as you can see, and it's going to be in red, where gender is going to be either male or female, and these are just pieces of text. If you were to translate that to a dummy variable, for example, you could change the name of the variable to male, and every time the observation, the person, is a male, you could just add one, and whenever the observation, the person you're interviewing is a female, you just add zero. So one means true, means that that person is male, and zero false, that that person is not male, that person is a female. So basically a dummy variable is like a categorical variable with only two categories, male and female. And as such, you could also add labels to it. And remember, labels in Stata are blue. So now let's take a look at how we can do that in Stata. Once again, we're back to Stata, and I'm using a do file that is available for you to download containing every single command we're using in this video. As usual, the first thing I want to do is set up Stata. So I select everything and then press Ctrl D. And I want to create a dummy variable now for our variable trunk. So let's, sum, let's summarize our variable trunk in detail. Use the option detail because we want to look to find its median value. So here is here are some summary statistics for our trunk variable, and the median is 14. It's equal to the 50th percentile. So why would I be doing that? Let's say I want to buy one of those cars. Let's go back to 1978. Say I want to buy one of those cars. But I want a car with a big trunk because I travel a lot and I want to take a lot of luggage. So I'm looking only for cars with a trunk size above the median of 14. So let's go back to our do file. So I want to create a dummy separating cars with a large trunk and I'm going to name that dummy, that variable LG trunk. And this variable is going to be equal to 1 if the trunk size is greater or equal to 14, which is the medium value of trunk, as we have seen here on the left-hand side. And I'm going to use the command generate. And since this is a 1 or 0 variable, I want to define its type to be a byte, just to save some memory space. And I also can't forget to deal with missing data. So what I'm saying here is, OK, Stata, generate a variable of the type byte Name large trunk, LG trunk, which is equal to true, one, if trunk is greater or equal to 14. If and only if trunk, whatever observation we're taking of trunk is not missing. So this is just an option saying that trunk, the observation is missing, and this is a negation. So let's generate this variable, select everything, press Ctrl D, and let's browse. Let's see how our variable LG trunk compares to trunk. So we select this and we execute it. And here it is. So every time our trunk size is above 14, we have a one. And every time it's below 14, we have a zero. We have just created a dummy variable. Back to Stata. If we want to use a code to check whether it has worked, let's use count. So count if trunk size is greater or equal to 14 and large trunk is equal to zero. So what I'm saying here is I want to count every observation for which trunk is greater or equal to 14 and large trunk is equal to zero, which should be absolutely none. So if our dummy variable worked, every time you have a car with a trunk which is greater or equal to 14, then LG trunk is going to be equal to one and not zero. So this should count to zero. Let's execute this and we are right. Here it is, our count was zero. Back to the do file. I want to drop this variable now 
because I want to show you a different way of doing this. So the second method is a bit more complicated, not much more, just a little bit. And we're going to use generate once again, but we're going to generate a variable called large trunk. And it's going to be equal to one if the trunk size is greater or equal to 14, just like we did above. But here we did not specify that it was going to be equal to one. So here we say it's equal to one. And if the trunk size is smaller than missing, missing values are treated in Stata as infinite values. So by doing this, by using this expression here, we are ruling out missing values. We're making sure one is only going to exist if the trunk size is greater or equal to 14 and not missing. So let's create this. And let's repeat these two commands over here. Let's repeat this command over here. So let's browse our large trunks and trunk to see. Okay. So the problem here is that instead of having a zero, whenever the trunk size is higher than 14, higher or equal to 14, we have missing values. So we have to replace these missing values for zeros. Let's close this window and check our codes again. So we're going to use this code here to replace large trunk is going to be equal to zero if the trunk size is smaller than 14. So for every observation, we don't have to worry about missing values here because as I said, missing values are considered to be infinite. So we execute this. And once again, let's browse our two variables. And now we see that it has worked. See, everything is fine here. If we, if you want, you can use the count again. Let's copy and paste this here below. And select it. Control D to execute it. And once again, you see here on the bottom left that it's zero. So it has worked. So the main difference here is that here above in the first method, we just used one line of code and using our second method, we had to use two lines of code. The first one, the generate that created all ones and the second one, the replace, which created the zeros. Great. So we have this new variable large trunk, but we don't have a label. Let's add a label to it, call it large trunk. You will see it here on the right hand side as we execute it. Great. We have LG trunk and the label large trunk. So once again, we could browse large trunk. I don't want to do it now, but I do want to define and assign value labels to it. As I said before, every time you have a one means yes, the car has a large trunk and zero means no, the car does not have a large trunk. So like we learned in our last lesson, we need to first define a label, give it a name, which is LG trunk lab for label and say that every value zero is going to have a label of no and every value one is going to have a label of yes. So you won't see anything happening here, but we have to execute this command. So we just created, we just defined the value label and now we're going to assign that value label by typing the command label followed by values, the name of the variable you want to assign these labels to, which is large trunk, LG trunk, and then the name of the label. So we do this. What's going to happen is, let's see what's going to happen here. Browse. Can you guess? LG trunk. Now we select it and we execute it. And you guessed it. So every time we have a zero, now we have a no. This is a label. That's why it's in blue. And you can see it here on top that that is equivalent to zero. And yeses are going to be equivalent to one. So let's close this. And now I want to show you a different way of creating dummy variables. I want to create dummy variables from categorical variables like rep 78. So why is rep 78 a categorical variable? At least I'm treating it as a categorical variable. Let's execute this. So I'm saying there are five categories of repair records. There's only numbers, but I could say one is very low, two is low, three is average, four is above average, and five is uh, a lot. So let's treat these as five categories. And let's say I want to create one dummy variable for each. A variable that every time that rep 78 is equal to one, that variable is going to be equal to one as well. Every time rep 78 is going to be equal to two, the dummy variable for two is going to be equal to one. 
and so on. Let me show you this so you can better understand it. So now I'm going to use the variable rep78 with the command tab and this option over here, generate dumb. So what this is going to do, it's going to generate one new variable called dumb plus a number for each of the categories in rep78. So it's going to generate variables dumb1, dumb2, dumb3, dumb4, and dumb5. Let's see it, execute it. And here to the right hand side, you can see we have five new variables. So the variable dumb1 is equal to one whenever rep78 is equal to one. Dumb2 is equal to one whenever rep78 is equal to two and zero otherwise and so on. And let's go back to our do file because I want to sort our data by rep78. So I want to organize our data by records of rep78 from one through five in ascending order. So I execute the command rep, sort, I mean, and now let's browse our data, our rep78 and the dumb followed by a question mark, which means it can take any character after this. And this is going to comprise every dummy variable we created. When we execute this, we will see that we have for every repair record of one, this dumb one is going to be equal to one and everything else is equal to zero. So everything else is zero. Every time we have a two on repair record, our dumb two is going to be equal to one and everything else is a zero and so on. And this can be useful whenever you want to create dummy variables from categorical variables.